Hello world, my name is Keon, and the last time you were listening to me, you were probably left off at this exact same screen. I don't move around a lot. So now we're going to start making this do what we want it to do. Real quick, let's lower this window. And from now on, every time I test the game, I'm going to do a play in viewport instead of having to wait for stuff to load up. Hit the play in viewport button, and you'll see that right now we don't really have much going on. It's telling me to rebuild the lighting. I say screw that. I'm not rebuilding anything. But, uh, so yeah, we have a basic level that started up and there's nothing going on. So let's make some magic happen, shall we? I think we shall. First thing you want to do is get your mouse free and then go back into Kismet. Now, uh, I'm going to, even though I, we have all these here, I'm still going to show you how to pull them up. Uh, let's make this window a little bit bigger. In fact, let's maximize it. How about that? Now, the place you want to pay attention to is over here the bottom right hand corner. We're going to call this startup. So select all of it by holding control and alt and then just clicking and dragging on the background and then hit C. And I'm just going to say startup. This, what this does is that it comments it out and it makes it so that we could, if we need to move this, all you got to do is hit the word startup, hold control and move it around. Wait a second. Huh. Guess it only works in the material editor. Oh well. Either way, uh, that's how you recomment stuff out in UDK. So, let's see what's going on here. First thing we have is a player spawn. I'm gonna move this out the way for the time being. What exactly, first before we start anything, try to think of what you want to do first. You can not You can go in there and start experimenting. Now I have nothing wrong with that. But it's better if you have a solid idea of what you want to do, how it's going to do it, and understanding what can be done and what can't be done through the default kismet. Now if you have a programmer on your team, he should be able to make um, custom kismet variables and custom kismet uh, actions and events. But if you don't, take some time to go through the UDN condominium, condom, condom, is, a, is a file, I'm a, I'll, not a file, a uh, entire page dedicated to each of these functions and the variables and the, a lot everything kismet basically so take some sp time reading through that and you'll get a better idea but here's what we want to happen we want a turret to shoot at our player until it's either a out of sight or b disabled so what we want is we want all this stuff to start up we want certain things to happen when our player spawns so we'll add a new action go down to um, action no not an action that's an event new event player player spawn that's how we get player spawn so when that happens what do we want to happen well we need the turret to start shooting at us the turret's not gonna know where we are if we don't tell it where we are so we need to add a player variable so we go down here to variable and you see where it says player for some reason this crap does not work for me I do not know why I never been able to figure that out so what I like to do is I just make a object and then I like to name it player so it's not even name it, just comment that it's the player. That way it'll work like that. You can put player here, but I don't think it makes a huge difference. In fact, I just wouldn't do that at all. So, this is whenever we spawn, it instigates this to start up. Now, for some reason, the methods in which we want to use to have the turret shoot at the player will not pick up the player variable it'll only pick up the dynamic it'll only pick up uh, other variables for some reason so that's why we have this guy the dynamic trigger volume so with it selected in the level you want to right click the background in kismet and then add a new object variable using dynamic trigger volume zero and this is our guy and what we want to do now is we want to attach him to here however in the process of doing that, I learned I picked up something. I don't know if this was mentioned in the tutorial that I saw, but I feel if it wasn't, then I feel cool. But if it was, then credit goes to that guy. But anyways, what we want to do is what happens when the player dies. Uh, this volume is going to be left wherever the player died at. It's not going to come back to the player. So what we want to do is that we want to make sure that this teleports back to the player's location every time. So here's the target and here's the destination. The destination is always going to be the player. Another thing that will help you remember what you can attach to it is 
purple, purple, I mean magenta, these things are color coded and it makes life so much easier. So once the player spawns, we want this to teleport to the player. And it, we would also like for it to attach to the player. So the tart what we're attaching to is the player, and what we're want to attach to the player is a dynamesh. I mean not dynamesh, dynamic trigger volume. And then we make sure these two are connected too, because if these aren't connected, no information is coming from point A to point B. And you need something to start up. You know something's a startup because it'll have nothing on this side, usually. In fact, I'm pretty sure 99% of the time, but I'm not 100% sure, so I'm going to have to stick with 99. Now, this light, we added it and made it movable so we can actually visually see what's going on. Because this could be all working right now, but we won't know because we can't see it with our own eyes. So, add a new object variable using the point light. You know how to do that. And go ahead and attach it to the player as well. So, and then of course we need to make sure that this action starts up. So just for the hell of it, bring split teleport up into two. Now, of course, making it look visually easy to read is a plus. But since we're doing a tutorial real quick, we're just going to get down and dirty. So let's go in and play the game. Best thing about Kismet is that you don't have to compile anything. You just go in, mess with stuff, and then go back into the game. But before we start, we got to do something that's very important. And if you haven't done it already, shame on you. I'm going to show you what we need to do. We got to go over here and save. I'm just going to call this tutorial for dudes. Make sure you save frequently and incrementally also. I'm not going to do it for this tutorial, but make sure whenever you work in real life, you save in increments. So that way, if you F up something, you can just go back to an earlier increment and prevent the F up. Because sometimes, sometimes you mess up files beyond relief beyond your prayer. Okay, so we see that we've spawned, but we one didn't spawn at the spawn point and two, the light is not following us. So let's see what's going on here. Actually I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna try playing through this. So yeah, it's not following us. The reason I didn't make this tutorial perfect is because I knew I was going to make some mistakes and it's better if you see me make mistakes and see me fix it and then you'll know exactly what to do when you run into this error. So one thing that I've noticed right off the bat is that uh, it doesn't seem to want to work with certain game types. I cannot really explain that. I don't know. That's something you got to ask Epic. But we got to exit and go to view. Because in reality, that that light should have teleported to us, so it doesn't matter where I spawn, should it be around me already. So go to View, and go to World Properties. Now go to Game Type, and make sure both of these are UT Game. And then go ahead and save for the hell of it. Now we're just going to jump back in here, see what happens. We got a gun! Alright, still not working though. That's not the thing I was expecting to happen, so... Luckily, I still have my code pasted. I'm going to copy that inside of Kismet real quick as a reference and figure out what's going on. Let me see real quick, though. I don't want to have to do that. I'm pretty sure it has something to do with this guy. I don't like him. But we shall see. So, control, paste, blah, blah, blah. I'm like 95% sure it has to do with that guy. Oh, you know what? No, it doesn't. It has to do with me being an idiot. Alright, so maybe you picked it up, maybe you didn't. But, what we have going on is that we have only the Dynamesh teleporting. That's why the light's not following. So we gotta make sure that the light is also being teleported there. So, just as simple as dragging back. Most of these links could have more than one thing coming in or out of it. Giggity. So, let's play. And we still don't have a light. Something's not right. So now we gotta look at everything. Now this is where we go through and start uh breaking down what's going on. So when a player starts and it's instigated by the player, we teleport a light. Let me come on now. I guess I can't do that. Teleport a light and a dynamic trigger volume to the player. And then we attach these to the player. Oh no! Haha! -ha, see? Simple mistakes like that. 
The attachment should be the light and the player should be the target. Some of you probably already knew that. Others are following me word for word. So, let's do this now. Okay, looks like it's yep, it's working. Let me let me get out of this window real quick so I can show you what I'm talking about fully. So, yeah, see, when, uh, whenever we go, the light follows us. So that's just how we know it's working. Another way we know it's working is uh, something that happens in programming that they didn't add until, like, within the last year with Kismet, and I think it's a pretty good idea, is the, the breakpoints. Now, basically, it just uh, lets you know, hey, something's working, or th this is what happens. This is when the information gets sent through here. So what's going to happen is I'm going to add a breakpoint here, and it's going to stop the game once it reaches that. So what should happen is the player spawns, objects teleport to the player, and then this attaches to the player. Done. In order to see breakpoints, you got to enable Kismet debugging, and then start the game up. And see, that, that, that was almost instantaneous because that's how fast the information flows. I'm pretty sure it varies depending on your processing speed and all that good stuff, but... I don't know all the little technical details. But that's it for the startup, folks. When I come back to the next video, I'll show you how to create the turret and then how to make the turret kill you. So thank you for watching. Comment, critique, like, and subscribe. Tune in next time. Bye.